What is up to all the Unten Inc. viewers? To answer all your questions, welcome to the seventh episode of all of your suggestions. Your guys' first suggestion is the biggest rocky planet in the universe. Unfortunately, we really can't say what's the biggest rocky planet in the universe because there is a chance that there is bigger ones, but we don't know anything about it. But right now, the biggest rocky planet in the entire universe is Galicia 436b. This planet is pretty close to us, around 32 light years away. But don't think that the biggest rocky planet found is way bigger than Earth. It's only one and a half times Earth. Giant planets in the universe are all gas planets. And a rocky planet like Mars or Earth, it's very hard for it to get that big. This giant rocky planet only has a diameter of 55,000 kilometers. But astronomers believe that the mass of this planet is 22 times the mass of Earth. A lot of you comment on how do scientists and astronomers figure out how far something is or what's its mass or what it's made out of. Like for example, they say this thing is 22 million light years away from us. How do they measure that? How did they measure the mass of Galicia? Did they send the scale? You have to know that all of this information provided for us, a lot of research went into it. Like for example, if they want to figure out the mass of this planet or what it's made out of, they try researching it by the gravitational pulls in the near objects. And then they figure out what the mass of this planet is. Like for example, they could look at Earth from really far away compare it to the moon, and figure out the mass of Earth. These calculations are very complicated. You could kind of compare it to someone that could read hieroglyphics. These scientists are a master at measuring these things. Either way, this is the biggest rocky planet we've ever found. And we don't have much more information about it. Like what's going on on the surface? Or is there anyone living on top of it or no? Scientists believe that rocky planets don't get huge like Jupiter, so the chances of finding something bigger than this are very low. Aliens have to probably live on something like this, because they can't live on a gas planet, so it's good to research planets like this. When James Webb goes up, let's see what it finds. Let me talk about James Webb for a little bit. There's a high chance that this thing will be launched right on time. Because the rocket is ready and the telescope is good to go. They basically just have to set it up for launch. The next suggestion is one of the coolest beetles, the rhinoceros beetles. This insect is the power lifting champion of the world. This thing can lift up to 850 times its own weight. If you've seen this video on Unten Inc, we introduce you to an insect that has very good pushing power. But this one lifts up the weight. It's kind of like a 100 kilogram person lifting 850 times his own weight. That means it can lift up to eight and a half tons, which is kind of like the weight of this semi truck. There's a reason they call this the rhinoceros beetle, because it's giant. The big ones can be as big as 15 centimeters. You could kind of mistake it for like a mouse. This beetle uses its under horn to dig and its top horn to fight other males. And usually males fight over the female and whichever male wins the fight gets the female. Not only is this the power lifting champion, but this thing is found everywhere in the world. But evolution caused it to look different in each continent. 
like a rhinoceros beetle in South America looks like this, and the Asian rhinoceros beetle looks like this. But in the beginning, they looked very similar to each other. If you see these, don't hurt them, because just like the insects you've seen in this video, they are very good for Earth and the environment. Like for example, one of the things it does, it moves around dirt and basically gives it more life. Just like we said before, this beetle is very harmless. It doesn't have any venom, it doesn't bite you, and unlike the American roach, it's not disgusting. And it doesn't want to be next to people like the American roach. But let's go talk about Einstein's brain. A lot of people ask, what's the difference between Einstein's brain and a normal brain? We first have to know that Einstein's brain is kept in New Jersey in a lab. The first thing we have to tell you is that it's 15% wider than a normal brain. Scientists believe that this wideness of Einstein's brain caused them to learn complex mathematics and be able to solve it. His brain didn't have more neurons than a normal brain, but the width of the brain caused the neurons to have a better connection, and that allowed him to solve complex equations. But let's leave the brain and go to space again. 9377 Sedna is either a dwarf or an asteroid. Astronomers have not been able to find out if this thing is a dwarf or an asteroid. Sedna is very close to us, only 13 billion kilometers. So it's kind of outside the solar system, and that's three times the distance of Neptune. Scientists believe that Sedna exited the solar system. Like they believe that Sedna was born inside the solar system and over the billions and billions of years, it exited the solar system and got farther and farther. Either way, they're still researching it and they will find out if it's an asteroid or a dwarf planet. Let's stay in space and go visit a spacecraft that was recently launched. Lucy spacecraft was launched 22 days ago. Lucy's plan is to do research on different asteroids in the solar system. This thing wants to reach the asteroid belt and research at least 8 asteroids. It recently left and it has a long way to go. They say in the year 2025, Lucy will get to its first destination and it's planned to stay up there for 12 years. We wish it the very best. Since we're already in space, let's go a little bit farther and let's get to the Oort cloud. These pictures you're seeing of the Oort cloud that is amazing are all frozen asteroids in space. But this is an idea of scientists. The distance of this cloud to us is 0.03 light years away. You might be saying, oh, that's pretty close. It's only 0.03 light years. But do you know how far 0.03 light years is? 300 billion kilometers. You guys already know the Voyager and how fast it's moving through space. It has a speed of 61 and a half thousand kilometers an hour and that's an insane speed for us. But do you know when it will reach the Oort cloud? In 300 years. And you should also know that the width of this cloud is 3 light years. So it's a world of its own in there. So what do you guys think is going on in this cloud? Another suggestion you guys told us is projects that are impossible. 
One of those is Exceed 4000. You guys already know about Tokyo. A little room is thousands of yen a month for rent. And that is why they wanted to build the biggest skyscraper in the world in Tokyo. A skyscraper that had a height of 4,000 meters. The length and width of this building would be 6 kilometers by 6 kilometers. And it was planned to be built in the ocean. It was meant to have 800 floors. And 1 million people could live inside this thing. Basically, a city of its own. A city that has everything inside it. The designers of this building said they need 3 million tons of steel. And the budget they asked for was 1 trillion 700 billion dollars. Some people say that Taisei Corporation, the company that designed this building, did all this for a publicity stunt. Basically making their company look better by giving this design out. Some people make fun of Taisei Corporation that they did this all for clout. And something like this is impossible to build. Especially in a place like Japan where earthquakes and tsunamis are very likely. They say if this was built, it would be taller than Mount Fuji. Mount Fuji has a height of 3776 meters. And as you know, Exceed was planned to be 4000 meters high. Please share your ideas and thoughts about this in the comment section.